Hola amigos, ¿qué tal? Stuart here from Spain Speaks with an update video today. We'll have a bit of a chat about what's been going on in Spain over this last week or so while I go for a walk around my part of Madrid. As we can see, very, very dry at the moment. I'll turn the camera around so you can see just how dry it is. Not much greenery going on in that park at least because uh, as we know, it hasn't rained in this part of Spain for months and it's been heat wave after heat wave after heat wave. But the good news is that it's not as hot as it was when I left Spain back in late July. Very hot when I left and uh, it's uh, quite a bit cooler now, although it was hot the other day and I thought it was going to be another hot period, but uh, it's not the case and nights especially are uh, cooler than they were, so that's good news. Now it hasn't been a very prolific week for me this week from a video point of view. I was on a bit of a roll there in Portugal, putting out content on a daily basis almost. But uh, here in Madrid, when I got back, uh, it normally takes me a few days to adapt to the uh, new conditions here, to get used to the dry weather, especially after being in such a humid place for the last month. And of course, uh, although there's no time difference, there's no, there's no jet lag or anything like that, it does take me a few days, I find, to uh, get used to this part of the world again. And that's the reason why my videos haven't been as regular this week as they were in Portugal. And another reason is that I've switched off from the news over this last week or so. Haven't been reading the papers with as much frequency as I would normally do in a normal week, and uh, therefore not getting inspired by anything that has been happening in Spain. And to be honest, there's not a lot on. August, as we know, is normally a very quiet month in Spain, lots of people on holidays. And although the uh, parliament came back uh, this week, there hasn't been a lot on the political agenda and uh, not a lot of stories dominating the news, or at least any new stories. Uh, I think. Prime Minister Sanchez is not in Spain currently, or at least he wasn't in Spain this last week. He's been in South America trying to uh, develop better relations with some of those South American countries, Ecuador, Colombia, no doubt Bolivia as well, trying to find allies there. And uh, I'm always curious to know what the relationship is like between Spain and its former colonies, those colonies that of course became independent a few centuries ago, what's the relationship like today? We all know that Spain left a cultural legacy in South America, language of course, religion, and there must be a few other cultural things that Spain uh, established in that part of the world, but uh, I'm not sure whether they have a similar relationship to the way the Commonwealth countries have a relationship. I don't know whether there's a, uh, a South American Games like we have a Commonwealth Games. I don't know if there's any other sporting events where uh, countries play against each other like we do, for example, in uh, cricket competitions or rugby competitions where we can uh, test those cultural ties. I don't know whether South American countries in Spain have that, or I don't know whether there is animosity in those South American countries when it comes to Spain. I've got no idea. So uh, if you are living in a South American country, or you have had experience in a South American country, tell us what the relationship between those countries and Spain is like. Over the years, I've seen some tensions, let's say, there were tensions a few years ago between the former King of Spain and Hugo Chavez, I think, in Venezuela. There was a, a bit of lack of respect. We saw recently how the current King didn't stand up when he visited Colombia at the presidential ceremony because they brought out the uh, Bolivar sword. One of the swords that the leader of the independence movement used back in the day to uh, free those countries of the Spanish. So that was controversial. And there's also been a fair bit of negative press when it comes to these anti-Columbus movements that are popping up or have been popping up over the last few years in some South American countries. And of course, North American countries as well, where people uh, decide to pull down statues of people like Christopher Columbus because they don't want to recognize that part of history. So uh, if you do know, let us know what the Spain-Latin American countries relationship is like. If it's good or if it's bad, let me know. Finally, I have found an area with some lush green grass. 
course, uh, I don't think you're allowed to walk on the grass because here in Spain that is a taboo, but uh, you won't see too many places like this in this part of Spain where the grass grows green, unfortunately. Especially now given the very dry conditions, lack of water, drought conditions that some parts of the country have to uh, see a grassed area like that, as I said, not very common. Now the Spanish government managed to get its new energy saving decree approved in parliament. They got it over the line. There was a fair bit of debate about whether or not it would be approved, but of course the government has the support of minority partners and uh, they got this energy savings plan through the parliament uh, even though it has already been in place for the last month or so I think or at least three weeks and uh, as people know we have to set air conditioning units at 27 degrees celsius if you have a bar or a restaurant or something like that. Not in private homes and not in hotel rooms, but uh, in all other circumstances, 27 degrees Celsius. Yesterday, I took the metro into the center of Madrid. I went into the center and had a drink with a friend. And uh, I must say that the metro trip was a very hot, sweaty, stinky journey because the air conditioning on the metro is set at 27 degrees Celsius. And people were sitting on the train doing what they could to stay cool. There were plenty of people with the old Spanish fan waving it in their face, trying to get a bit of cool air on their face. But of course, that's not easy to do. And uh, everybody else sitting there sweating in silence on the Madrid Metro. And that's what regular commuters on public transport here in Spain are gonna to have to put up with for the next month or so. While the temperatures are still high, uh, hot temperatures on public transport, hot, uncomfortable temperatures. But the good news, as we know, is that a lot of public transport is going to be free or uh, it's going to be discounted. There are some serious discounts on public transport. For example, here in Madrid, a 50% reduction if you buy a monthly pass. And I think in other parts of the country, it's also around 50% or 30% reduction when it comes to regular travel on public transport in Spain. So uh, that's compensating the heat. The government has also published a 50 point plan to help people save energy, 50 tips and tricks to uh, bring people's energy bills down. Things like making sure that your houses are prepared for the winter, for example, double glazing, uh, making sure that the uh, heaters are working well, functioning well, making sure that your uh, boiler is in top condition, and all of these little ways that people can save energy. But as somebody pointed out on the channel a few weeks ago, people are already experts when it comes to saving energy because we've been uh, doing it for the last few years at least, uh, especially here in Spain, given the very high energy prices. Well, not only here in Spain, but also in other parts of Europe and the world. So people are already experts when it comes to saving energy. So the government could probably have saved themselves some time when it comes to that 50 point plan. Another thing that has caught my attention this week has been the plans for the new gas pipeline that will take gas from Portugal and Spain into Germany through France. As we know, uh, France doesn't want this pipeline to go ahead. They uh, think that it's not feasible at this time. There are other ways to uh, get gas into those Central European countries or fix those Central European uh, countries' energy woes. And uh, the Prime Minister of Spain the other day said that if France is not on board, he will send the gas through Italy. So I imagine that he has Italy on board with this plan. And the final thing that has caught my attention in the press this week in Spain is about crime in Spain. Some statistics have been published or at least some uh, statistics comparing crime before the pandemic and crime in 2021, 2022, post pandemic. And uh, interesting to see which crimes have gone up and interesting to see which crimes have gone down. I've written some of the main statistics down here on a piece of paper just to make sure that I get them right. So for example, injuries from brawling are up 43% on pre-pandemic figures. Rape is up 62% on pre-pandemic figures. Drug trafficking is up 34% on pre-pandemic figures. But uh, some good news when it comes to 
violent home burglaries, that is down 20%. So some interesting but also sad statistics there when it comes to crime in Spain and comparing those levels before the pandemic with uh, what's going on today. Uh, sad when it comes to rape and violent crimes against women, up by 62%, not sure what's going on there. And also violent brawls up by quite a lot as well. And I think this is a problem, especially in some of the nightclub areas in Spain or when uh, big groups of youths get together. Sometimes it uh, turns into a violent fight. People just get too drunk, alcohol and drugs involved. And uh, of course, these huge fights break out. But uh, some good news when it comes to violent home robberies, down 20%, I think I said. Can't remember the exact figure, but I think it was around 20%. So good news for homeowners that those crimes are down and also drug trafficking up, which uh, is no surprise given the amount of drugs that are circulating in this country. Spain, as we know, is a gateway to uh, for drugs, sorry, for the European Union. They come in via the south of Spain from the north of Africa. They come in through the ports from places like South America. So there's always a lot of drug activity going on, lots of drug consumption, lots of drug trafficking. And uh, as I said, that is a crime that is up in Spain. So no doubt a busy time for Spain's police forces, the national police, the civil guard, and also local police, I'm sure, are kept on their toes with all of this crime going on. So I'll wrap the video up there. Questions and comments, please leave them in the section below. Debate the video out as you normally do. Give it a thumbs up if you liked it, thumbs down if you didn't. I'll see you in the next one. Hasta luego from hot, dry central Spain.